today. I'm with Johnny Cashmere on, well, a, a very invigorating but yet sad day, Acid Fest. You and uh, Trent Acid, the late Trent Acid, were like brothers. And uh, tell everybody right now your feelings about today. I mean, a lot of people are asking me if I'm excited and... I mean, it's, I guess excited's not the right word. It was one of those things where you're sitting at home and you know that when you leave the house to come here that the Acid Fest is starting and that you have to memorialize your best friend, your brother who just died. You know, I didn't even want to leave the house because I knew it was going to start, you know. And then you come here and you see all these people and the great turnout outside and the crowd chanting Trent Acid and it makes it all worth it. I mean, you can't sum up a person's life in one day, but if we could... I think you'd be happy with today and the turnout. Oh, I think so, too. The, the demons that enveloped his life, uh, were there times that you really had to get on him to try and, uh, you know, yeah, change I his mean, ways? Of course. I mean, that's the job of any best friend. And, and towards the end, it got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't give him my friendship because it would be like me saying, yes, it's okay to, to, to do what you were doing and to risk your life. I couldn't send that message as a friend, so I, I had to distance myself. And when, when was the last time you saw Trent? I mean, it wasn't long. It was only probably two months before, maybe a month or two before he got uh, locked up the last time. And, you know, he was just struggling. He was struggling. It wasn't an easy life. And I hated seeing my best friend and my brother go through that. And uh, I just want him to lay to rest and, and find the peace now that he couldn't find on earth. And if, if, if this event can help bury him in peace, then... That's what we're going to do. Let's talk about happier times, the highlight of your career with Trent Acid, the Backseat Boys. Yeah, I mean, when we were in Japan for Yokohama Arena for Big Japan Pro Wrestling in front of 12,000 people, and we wrestled Men's Teo and Jun Kasai, and uh, we won the tag titles that night, and I became Big Japan Junior Heavyweight Champion, and then Trent ended up winning the title for me. And, uh, you know, Japan really helped us out a lot, and I know Trent's goal in life was to go to Japan, even more so than WWE or TNA, he wanted to go to, to Japan. So, you know, he definitely got to live that dream, and Japan loved him. I mean, you should see the way the crowd, they really, you I know. I remember how in England and in Italy, they adored him. Yeah, they really did. They really did. And he's been all over the world. I mean, he was a 29-year-old guy, but it's like he lived the life of a 70-year-old in 29 years. Yeah. So, yeah. it's not like he missed anything. He jammed it all in, and, and he never slept. I mean, it's like he knew that he didn't have time to, to rest. He, he always made the most of every minute, Bill. I, I don't want this to sound corny, but if there was any way Trent was able to be watching what you and I are doing right now, and you could look right in that camera, and he's there, what do you want to say to him? Just from this point on, I'm going to try my hardest for you to keep your legacy alive. And, uh, you know, I, I love you, man. You know, I could call him at any hour of the night and talk to him about nonsense you know he was just that close to me it's like losing a twin brother you know I, I really don't know how else to explain it it's not just losing a brother it's like losing a twin